Foundation School of Nursing. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I don't want to give my uh, staff any heart palpitations, but I'll just break protocol for one second. And before I introduce these uh, honorable gentlemen, I'll introduce our wonderful students uh, in the back who just gave the Prime Minister of the team. <laughs> Uh, so we'll, uh, that, that was uh, this is the future, and we're just delighted that this announcement taking place uh, in a place of education. Uh, so welcome, uh, obviously, Prime Minister and, and uh, Premier, uh, ministers, members of Parliament, members of Provincial Parliament. Uh, Mayor Pellegrini is here from King. Uh, lots of great stakeholders are here. I see the OMA and the, uh, of course, uh, the nursing, uh, the nursing crowd. Uh, the hospital crowd, I think, is here somewhere. So it's uh, it's, a, it's a great gathering. I have to acknowledge, of course, my boss, who is Chief Somani, the chair of our board of governors, and doing double duty is Kim Moran, who also is with the OMA and the vice chair of our board of governors. So. Uh, it's okay. Don't worry. Um, so, so. Um, you know, if you, I'm, for a lot of a lot of you, this is a welcome back to uh, Seneca's campus. But if you haven't been here for a while, there's two things that have changed. One is we've rebranded as Seneca Polytechnic, and the reason we've done that is because we wanted to express in our name that great combination of academic rigor that you get at a university and that practical, hands-on, career-based training that you get at a college. But you also notice that new name for this school, and it's thanks to the generosity of the Nanji Foundation. And Prime Minister, I know you know the family, uh, and and uh, it's an extraordinary story of, of course, the, the flight from Uganda of the Ismaili community came to Canada, just brought so much with them, and of course continue to serve the community. The Nanjis are huge philanthropists and have donated to so many health institutions in the GTA. And Premier, I know you are a great fan of our immigrant communities and a huge supporter of everything that we do, and to welcome our newcomers. So with that, let me just say that um, it's fitting here because this really is the future. This is education. We don't have a health care system. We can't have shorter wait times, and we can't have better health care without these wonderful students graduating and taking their place in a, in a terrific health care system. What a great day, and it's my honor to introduce to you the Right Honorable Justin Trudeau. Thank you very much, David. Thank you for your leadership. Uh, it's great to be here with Ministers Holland and Sachs uh, and members of our Liberal team, Francesco, Leah, Tony, Helena, Majid, Paul, and Ryan. Premier Ford, Doug, my friend, it's good to share a podium with you once again. Another big announcement that's going to have a positive impact on the lives of Ontarians and uh, positive repercussions right across the country. It's always good to see you. Uh, Deputy Premier Minister of Health, Sylvia Jones, uh, Associate Minister of Mental Health and Addictions, Michael Tibolo, uh, assorted uh, MPPs, uh, Mayor of King Township, Steve Pellegrini. It's good to see so many people here today, uh, but especially, as David said, uh, so many of the students, staff, supporters, uh, and, uh, and leaders uh, in this community that have come together for this important announcement. C'est une importante annonce majeure pour le système de santé des Ontariens. For generations, uni universally accessible public health care has been a core part of what it means to be Canadian. It's built on a promise that no matter where you live or what you earn, you will always be able to get the medical care you need. Our universal health care system didn't happen by accident, and it won't continue without effort. And let's be honest right now. We're facing significant challenges to health care right across the country. Access to family doctors and nurse practitioners is not what it needs to be. Emergency rooms are overwhelmed. People are waiting too long for surgeries. And healthcare workers, healthcare workers are under immense pressure working in incredibly trying conditions. And we are focused on addressing those challenges. Last year, the federal government announced a major investment of $200 billion to strengthen our healthcare system. As part of this agreement, we said we'd work on tailored agreements with each province and territory to help address their unique challenges and needs. We've already reached agreements with British Columbia, PEI, Alberta, and Nova Scotia, and today 
We're immensely pleased to be here to announce an agreement with the province of Ontario. Our government will be investing $3.1 billion to help Ontario increase access to primary care, reduce wait times for surgeries and for seeing specialists, hire more health care workers, ensure people have access to the mental health care they need, and improve health care for Indigenous peoples. Notre gouvernement va investir 3.1 milliards de dollars pour aider l'Ontario à faciliter l'accès aux soins primaires, à réduire les temps d'attente, à embaucher plus de travailleurs de la santé, à augmenter l'accès aux soins de santé mentale et à améliorer les soins de santé offerts au peuple autochtone. The province will also modernize digital infrastructure in health. This means no more fax machines in hospitals. But it also means that healthcare providers, whether it's your pharmacist or your specialist, can securely access information about your health in a more convenient way, ultimately leading to better health outcomes for you and your family. This agreement will deliver real results. Comme je l'ai dit, les soins primaires vont être une des grandes priorités. L'Ontario va mettre sur pied de nouvelles équipes et améliorer l'accès aux médecins de famille et aux infirmières praticiennes. Primary care is about having someone you trust, who knows you and your kids, and who will make sure that everyone gets the right care. It's about getting the help you need to find the right specialist if and when you need it. A family health team is there to be your entry point into the healthcare system so you don't need to go to an emergency room. Of course, if we want to create new teams and increase access to primary care, we need more workers. So this is another big area of focus. Enrollment in healthcare education programs will be expanded by over 700 spots, including over 70 in Northern Ontario. And we will help the province remove barriers to make it easier for Canadian and internationally trained doctors and health professionals to practice in Ontario. These are only a few examples of what this agreement will do. It's a transformative investment that will deliver real improvements and protect our health care system now and into the future. Mais avant de terminer, je veux remercier encore une fois nos travailleurs et travailleuses de la santé, les étudiants et les étudiantes en soins infirmiers que j'ai rencontrés il y a quelques minutes, les médecins, infirmières, ambulanciers, préposés aux bénéficiaires et aux autres travailleurs de la santé qui donnent tout ce qu'ils ont pour aider les Canadiens Merci de prendre soin de nous et de ceux qu'on aime. And to healthcare workers, I know it's been really tough over the past few years. You want to do good work, but you're stretched too thin, or sometimes you don't have the right tools. Well, we're working hard to get you the reinforcements you need, and today's announcement will make a huge difference. Let's keep working all together to fight for the Canada we need, a Canada that makes sure that everyone can count on high quality, publicly accessible health care. Canada's the best country in the world. Let's keep working to make it even better. Thank you for all your attention. I'm now happy to pass it over to the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford. Well, first of all, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Prime Minister, and I'm thrilled to be here in King City. And, Mayor, uh, you have a great town, absolutely, and great people here. Uh, alongside Minister Jones, Minister Tobolo, Minister Parsa, and MPPs Laura Smith, Don Gallagher-Murphy, and Daisy Way to celebrate this historic health deal. To start, I want to acknowledge and welcome some of our amazing health care partners here with us today. Doris... Boy, special spot in my heart for Doris. Talk about uh, staying on top of me. My goodness, you're, you're, you're on top of me. Uh, Doris does incredible work. Uh, she, she's very passionate about making sure that we have enough nurses, and um, you're just you're real, real incredible. And Claudette Holloway as well from the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario. Anthony Dale from the Ontario Hospital Association. And people wonder that they're watching, uh, what, what does Anthony do? 
Well, he's a, no, no, honestly, and I say this respectfully, he represents all the hospitals and the CEOs. So that's what the Ontario Hospital Association does. And uh, Kim Moran and Dr. Andrew Park from the Ontario Medical Association, uh, they represent the, the docs. And I'll tell you, we have a phenomenal relationship with them. And thank you for all the work that you're doing. And thank you for joining us. I also want to thank uh, David Agnew and the entire team here at Seneca Polytechnic for hosting us and we, we had the opportunity to go in and visit some of the students and watch the, the great work that you're doing. And Prime Minister, I want to thank you, Minister Holland, Minister Sachs, and your whole team for working with us to finalize this agreement. To another example of our two governments coming together to get things done, whether it's combating auto thefts, attracting mega investments, being the EV plants, or improving health care, we've shown that political stripes don't matter. And I've said that from the day I got elected. I don't care if you're from the blue party, red party, purple party, pink party. We're, we're going to do stuff together to, to get things done. It's about advancing shared priorities. It's about improving people's lives. Thank you for your partnership. Today's agreement, this new funding, will bolster the significant work we're doing in Ontario to connect more people to convenient care close to home. Our government is making record investments in health care. We're getting shovels in the ground right across the province. We're investing almost $50 billion to support more than 50 new hospitals or hospital expansions. And I always say, no matter where you are in Ontario, you're either getting an expansion or a new hospital close by. We've made significant progress to bolster our frontline health care workforce. These are pretty staggering numbers, folks. Since 2018, we've added more than 80,000 nurses in Ontario. Did you hear that, Doris? 80,000 nurses in Ontario. In fact, 2023 was another record year with more than 17,500 nurses registering to work. And that beat the record from the previous year. And another 30,000 nursing students in schools just like Seneca. We've also added well over 10,000 new doctors and are breaking down barriers so highly skilled, internationally trained doctors can care for people in Ontario. We've empowered pharmacists to treat and prescribe medications for 19 common ailments. Just last week, Minister Jones, my Deputy Premier, made an incredible announcement of $110 million to connect 320,000 more people to a primary care team and we're investing to expand community surgical and diagnostic centers to connect people to the surgeries they need sooner. Because of our plan, because of these solutions, Ontario now has the shortest surgical wait times in all of Canada. And we're currently lead the country with 90% of people connected to a regular healthcare provider. While we're pleased with the progress, we know there's more work to do, a lot of work to do actually. That's why today's agreement is so important to strengthening our health care system. This is $3.1 billion investment will be used for targeted initiatives to continue building up our health workforce, improve access to family health services, enhance mental health and addiction programs, and expand access to digital health. It will help to ensure that people across Ontario will continue to get the high quality, convenient care they need when they need it. Thank you all for joining us and may God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll hand things over to the Federal Minister of Health, Mark Holland. Over to you, Minister. Well, thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you so much, Premier. It's a, a pleasure to be here. Uh, and this is indeed a, uh, such a critical day for Ontario, indeed our health system writ large. Uh, Prime Minister, uh, uh, your commitment, and Premier, your commitment to meet the challenges that are facing our health system, uh, I think is a, is a note of incredible encouragement and demonstration of how much can be done when we work together. Uh, over the last while, Minister Sachs and I uh, have had the pleasure of working with uh, Minister Jones and Minister Tobolo uh, to make sure that we take head on the challenges that are facing our health care system. Uh, so much, too much, was asked of health care workers during the pandemic. They cared, uh, carried an absolutely extraordinary load. Uh, and in that period of time, I know there was a hope when it was over that there would be a respite, a break. 
Uh, but what happened, of course, after we uh, left COVID was uh, misinformation, uh, backlogs, uh, exhaustion, uh, riddled our health system, as one would expect coming out of a global pandemic. And that spirit during the pandemic of lifting other pe uh, people up, of setting aside differences, of finding solutions, is certainly what's imbued in our actions here today. To support healthcare workers in our system, to make sure there are more doctors and nurses, to reduce wait times and backlogs, to make sure that we have better access to mental health care and to improve health data, because we know data saves lives. You know, I was so pleased to be able to be in person uh, as we announced agreements in British Columbia, in Alberta, uh, in Prince Edward Island, in Nova Scotia. And here today in Ontario is a truly historic announcement of $3.1 billion that's going to have a huge difference in making sure that we can deliver the care that Ontarians need. This bilateral agreement uh, is about delivering results and change. It means that we're supporting the outstanding workers that I was speaking about who made such extraordinary sacrifices and are expecting us to step up like this. More doctors and nurses means more access to care, means better outcomes for patients. This means less strain on our health system and it means uh, that people can see that line of progress because we know our public health care system is under strain, but despair will get us nowhere showing progress every day, that we're continuing to make our system better, that we have one of the best systems in the world, but that we're moving towards the best system in the world is what Canadians expect of us. Through this deal, Ontario will expand interprofessional family health teams from, uh, uh, from 18 new ones in communities with the greatest needs. <coughs> the province will also increase the total number of health providers by adding 600 family physicians, 600 nurse practitioners, and 3,000 registered nurses. This will help the health workforce uh, and backlogs here in Ontario. Ontario is also boosting, boosting surgeries, MRIs, and CT scans, and cancer screening across the health system. Making critical investments in health care also means getting Canadians the access to better mental health care. And I know that my colleague, Minister Sachs, will speak on that in a moment. Canadians deserve healthy lives, and making sure that they get the mental health care that they need is fundamental to that goal. The province is planning to add five additional integrated youth service hubs to the 22 that are already operating. This will provide single uh, window access to mental health, substance use and family health services for youth aged 12 to 25. Ontario's action plan also supports the continued rollout of the Ontario Structured uh, Psychotherapy Program, which will offer more than 4,800 uh, additional people. With good health data, uh, we know that we can also save lives and make an appreciable difference. Under this plan, the percentage of people in the province who have access to their own electronic health information will increase to 40%. This will make sure that Ontarians are able to take control of their own health. In, additional, in addition, more healthcare professionals will be able to securely access and share their patient, uh, patient health information electronically, 49%. Overall, these improvements are making the critical investments that we need to in our journey to ever improve our health system and make sure that it's there for Canadians when they need it. And with that, it's my pleasure to turn the podium over to Minister Jones. Thank you, Mark. It's great to be here at Seneca College today. Sorry, Seneca Polytechnique today, alongside Premier Ford, Minister Tobolo, Minister... And, and uh, Parsa and um, so many of my caucus colleagues to announce this important bilateral health care agreement for Ontario. I also want to extend a thanks to Prime Minister Trudeau, Minister Holland and Minister Sachs for your collaboration to get this agreement across the finish line. I also want to acknowledge some of our health care partners who continue to work together with us on these such important issues. Claudette and Doris, of course, from the Registered Nurses Association of Ontario, Anthony from the Ontario Hospital Association, Dr. Park and Kim from the Ontario Medical Association. We are indeed grateful for your partnership as we work together to improve health outcomes for patients. Through Ontario's Your Health Plan, our government is making record investments in our publicly funded health care system and making bold, innovative, and creative changes to improve patient care for today and for years to come. And our plan is working. 
data from the canadian institute for health information shows that ontario has the shortest surgical wait times in all of canada nearly eighteen thousand people received cataract surgeries at community surgical centers between april and december of last year and the backlog for surgical cancer screening was eliminated last august we are also continuing to make strides in hiring more nurses and doctors as premier ford mentioned in 2023, another record year with tens of thousands of nurses registering to work and many more nursing programs at universities and colleges across the province. Today's agreement will further support the work we are already doing on the ground here in Ontario. Last week, we did announce the creation of 78 new and expanded primary care multidisciplinary teams that will help over 300,000 Ontarians connect to family doctors, nurse practitioners in multidisciplinary settings. And just last year, we saw great success in our common ailments program in partnership with pharmacists, with over 700,000 patients being served at their community pharmacy. That's hundreds of thousands of fewer visits to a doctor's office or an emergency room, relieving pressures on family doctors and our entire healthcare system. This agreement will help us further expand healthcare education and break down barriers to make it easier for internationally educated doctors and healthcare professionals to practice here in Ontario, to keep building a pipeline of talented healthcare workers to provide Ontarians with high quality care when and where they need it. And while we ramp up the education programs for the healthcare workers of the future, we're also listening to our frontline doctors and our family doctors in particular about the challenges they are facing. Many are overworked, some are burned out, and that's why we're working closely with the Ontario Medical Association to eliminate, duplicate, and outdated forms so doctors can focus more time on patients and less time on unnecessary paperwork. We've made steady progress over the past year, but we know there is still more work that can be done. Today's announcement is another step towards improving the healthcare system for all, and it is a testament to the great work we can accomplish when together we put Ontarians first. Together we will continue to grow our healthcare system to help connect more Ontarians to convenient care, closer to home, no matter where you live. Thank you. Stay well, and it's now my honour to pass it over to Minister Sachs. Thank you, Minister Jones. Um, Prime Minister, Premier Ford, uh, Minister Jones, Minister Tubolo, Minister Holland, who is my partner in making sure that we're delivering the best health care for Canadians. I want to just take a moment to acknowledge that we're here a day after the announcement in Belleville yesterday because this is exactly why these investments that we're doing today in Ontario matter. Um, everyone who is here who's a colleague, we're here to make sure that the health care of Canadians and Ontarians is front and centre, but we're also here to ensure that we are saving lives. And that cooperative work, and I want to thank Minister Tobolo, um, means that when we speak to Mayor Ellis in Belleville, we're on the same page on what we need to do, and that's why we're here today. I want to thank Seneca College for hosting us today as we open the next chapter of this work, because together we are going to strengthen the health care system across Ontario. As the Minister of Mental Health and Addictions and the Associate Minister of Health, I'm pleased that the agreement we are signing today will help us reach our goal to ensure that mental health is treated as a full and equal part of our health care system. Mental health is health is not just a slogan. It is what Canadians and Ontarians expect of us to deliver on. Together, we are increasing access to mental health and substance use services for everyone in Ontario because we know we need this right now. We know Canadians are struggling and asking for help isn't always easy. And we know that barriers exist because of stigma, discrimination, socioeconomic status, or social exclusion. I'm glad to see that mental health is now a topic of conversation at almost every home in this country. I remember a time when mental health was never discussed. To struggle was to be seen as weak, but now, in a large part, thanks to young people, like many of you who are here today and studying at Seneca Polytechnique, today it's easier than ever to share that it's okay to not be okay. 
On our end, we're also working to improve mental health literacy so that people in Ontario and across Canada are equipped with the knowledge and skills needed to take care of their mental health and support the mental health of their friends, their families, and their loved ones. We also are working together using some in many innovative tools to enhance mental health support, particularly for youth. Minister Holland mentioned earlier about youth hubs across Ontario, and there will be more coming. When we can work with our youth, it's not only that we help them in the moment they're in, but preventing the struggles that they have ahead. I'm a mother of two teenage daughters, and I myself recognize firsthand how important it is and significant the mental health challenges we are facing with our young people, and also with our post-secondary students. It's really important that we make investments like today so that there is early intervention, so that we are focused on prevention. That's why we're working alongside provinces and territories and other partners to expand the availability of integrated youth service hubs across Canada. More to be done, more to do, but I'm excited for the road ahead. The amazing thing about these hubs is that they are a one-stop shop for services aimed at youth and also their families. They provide mental health support, substance use services, primary care, and more, all under one roof. It takes a village, and these youth hubs are really part of that village. We've seen that wraparound services are one of the ways, key ways to ensure that someone is able to successfully improve their lives. As Minister Holland mentioned earlier, bringing the total number of hubs in Ontario with this investment, we will be up to 27. So we are meeting youth where they are with what they need. And this is a really, really big deal. With access to care, housing, peer support, job training, and so much more, we're going to ensure that Canadian youth and our Ontario youth have the support that, to get the supports and the, need, the help that they need when they need it. Ontario's plan also includes help for adults with depression and anxiety through structured psychotherapy program, which my colleague mentioned earlier. And this program will allow patients to access publicly funded, short-term, evidence-based cognitive behavioral therapy. Under this plan, the program will be expanded to serve nearly 5,000 more Ontarians who are going to have better access to support that they need. In addition, these targeted initiatives in today's agreement will help strengthen the capacity of family health providers to deliver appropriate and timely care to their patients. Primary care and mental health starts with our family doctors and our family health teams. So supporting positive mental health in these spaces also includes that we can meet them where they're at, in, not just on their mental health, but also in substance use. It's a key part of integrating mental health care into the health care system. We start from where they are. Because we like to say that there's truly no health without mental health, whether it's with our primary care providers, our nurse practitioners, and so many other who are meeting our Ontario families where they are each and every day. And getting treatment shouldn't be any different than a physical injury or any other illness that they're facing. So today's agreement with Ontario aims to do exactly that. It upholds mental health care as a key priority, one that is recognized and shared by both of our governments. To anyone across Ontario, Canada who might be struggling, please know that you're not alone and help is available. We're going to continue our work together to ensure each and every Canadian has access to the mental health and substance use support they need wherever and whenever they need it. I want to thank all of you again for having all of us here today. This is what good partnership looks like and it's a really great day for Ontarians. I'd like to now invite my colleague and friend, Minister Michael Tobolo, to speak. Thank you, uh, Minister Sachs, and good morning, everyone. It is a real pleasure to be here this morning, and I'm very pleased that this new bilateral health care agreement includes increased support to address mental health and addictions. Supporting Ontarians' mental health and well-being is a key priority for our government. Through the Your Health Plan, we're continuing to build a recovery-oriented continuum of care and making it easier and faster for Ontarians to connect to high-quality, innovative, and evidence-based mental health and addiction supports closer to home. This includes the significant expansion of the Ontario St Structured Psychotherapy Program to over 100 locations across the province and the establishment of eight new youth wellness hubs over the past year, including the first ever Indigenous-led hub in Sagamuk First Nation. Since 2020, Ontario has launched 22 of these hubs, helping over 43 thousand youth connect to mental health and wellness services in their community, accounting for almost 170 
thousand visits based on their tremendous success will be opening an additional five hubs to connect even more communities to youth mental health services this new agreement will help us continue connecting people to convenient and appropriate mental health services including people and families in rural remote and indigenous communities and Ontario will continue to recognize the importance of indigenous led culturally appropriate services to support the health and wellness of indigenous communities <laughs> this agreement is an exciting milestone for all of us federally provincially and I want to thank all the partners who came together to make this reality as well as the incredible mental health and addictions organizations and frontline workers in our province I know how difficult your work is and I appreciate the incredible effort that all of you have put in during the pandemic post pandemic and continue each and every day you all do so much to support Ontarians and help them get the care treatment and support that they need thank you merci miigwech Thank you. We will now begin the question period. One question, one follow-up. First question goes to Jessica from Trillium. Good morning. So Ontario Health data shows that one out of every 10 patients who is admitted to the hospital from an emergency department in Ontario is waiting more than two days in the emergency department for a bed. I think some of those patients might be wondering where the urgency has been. This took years to come together, this agreement. So will this change anything for those patients in hallways anytime soon? I would like you, if you could, both the Prime Minister and the Premier, please. Great. Actually, after the Prime Minister, I'm going to send it to my expert, the, the Minister of Health. You know, what we're trying to do is cut down on, on wait times, especially in the emergency rooms. Uh, what plays a, a big uh, factor in this? Um, it's the OMA. I'd love Dr. Park to, to mention how we can work with the doctors, getting more doctors in the emergency departments. There's also approximately, and these are the numbers I've been told, approximately 25 to 30 percent of the people um, that come into the emergency department shouldn't be in the emergency uh, department. You know, someone might come in with a, need some stitches or a sore throat, uh, and I've, I've heard these stories. But it's our job to make sure that they get the support they need, and that's why we've uh, added over $110 million to primary care and uh, connecting over 90% of the population with primary care uh, doctors. We're going to continue building on that and making sure we get it up to 100% because I always say continuous improvement. Uh, but I think that announcement um, that Minister Jones made the other day is going to help tremendously. You know, people measure health care on, on three fronts. It's more, you know, it's a lot more complicated than that. But how long are they waiting to get a, a surgery? Uh, do they have a family doc? And how long is it taking when they go into emergency departments? Uh, the the top two, we're, I think we're working on, we're doing very well, still more work to do. But I'm going to be zoned in on these uh, emergency departments, and I'm going to work with OMA because the doctors play a massive, massive role in making sure we clear that up. I'll put the money in that is needed but we need the cooperation from everyone to make sure that that you go in there uh, rather than this four hours or six hours or eight hours waiting because I, I'm getting calls every day. Uh, let's talk it down to an hour. What do you need? Do you need more doctors? Do you need more money? What is it that you need? And we'll step up to the plate. I'll pass it over to the Prime Minister and then uh, over to our Minister of Health. Thank you, Doug. We've seen right across the country the same kinds of pressures, particularly coming out of the uh, pandemic, on healthcare workers, on healthcare systems. That's why last year the federal government sat down with the ten premiers uh, of provinces and three premiers of territories uh, and agreed to a $200 billion investment in our healthcare systems across the country over the next years. Now, healthcare is delivered by the provinces. And that's important. They have the expertise on it. But the federal government has an important role to play in supporting and helping fund that. And that's why in our priorities that we put forward for that funding, we're focusing very much on the things that are going to make the biggest difference for people concretely. One, as Doug just said, access to uh, family doctors 
and primary health practitioners and teams. The, the point of entry into the system should be someone reaching out to their family doctor, not having to go to an emergency room uh, and wait for hours to be redirected to a different place. Uh, for a specialist. So access to primary care is one of the huge priorities uh, that we're talking about today. We're also, as part of that and as another step, making sure we're investing in health workers. Um, health workers across the system who chose to go into uh, the care services as doctors, as nurses, as, as uh, personal care workers. Uh, everything they do, they do because they want to support their fellow citizens, they want to serve their communities. But it's getting harder and harder. And as people leave the profession, the ones who are there find themselves not only stretched thin, but unable to deliver the quality of care that they got in to be able to do, that they want to be able to deliver. So massive investments in supporting healthcare workers by hiring more, by credentialing, by ensuring that we're training up and bringing in reinforcements for our extraordinary healthcare workers who've been carrying a huge burden over the past years. The third area we're stepping up in, which is very much recognized also in this agreement we're announcing today, is around mental health. We know people are waiting too long to access the mental health care they need. They're, uh, challenged, particularly in rural, remote, or northern areas, to be able to access it. And we need to especially make investments in mental health for young people, because we know that if we give young people the tools to handle challenges they're facing around mental health early, that will set them on a better path for success for the rest of their lives, not just professional success, but personal, personal success in achieving their potentials. And all of that together, uh, we've also moved forward on health data and health information because not only do patients need to be able to know that when they go see a pharmacist or a specialist uh, or a doctor in an emergency room, they're going to have the right information in their uh, personal uh, file so that they can give them the right treatment. We need to be able to show Ontarians and indeed all Canadians that the significant money we're investing to improve our healthcare systems is delivering real results and outcomes for them. That's what the health data investments, it's the accountability, not to the federal government, it's accountability to Ontarians and all Canadians so people can know and see wait times going down, backlogs being eliminated, and the kinds of investments that are making a huge difference. This is what uh, we're announcing today with this $3.1 billion investment as we move forward on that, as we continue to be partners in delivering the right kind of quality public health care for all Canadians. En français. Je vais raccourcir un petit peu. Quand on a fait des investissements, quand on a annoncé des investissements de 200 millions de dollars dans le système de santé, on savait qu'il y avait euh, plusieurs priorités sur lesquelles il fallait miser. D'abord, l'accès aux médecins primaires, aux médecins de famille, qui sont la porte d'entrée dans le système médical pour les gens, pour qu'ils ne soient pas forcés à aller au, euh, au centre d'urgence pour des choses que leurs médecins de famille devraient pouvoir les aider en les dirigeant dans la bonne direction. On veut aussi être là pour investir dans les travailleurs de la santé qui ont fait un travail extraordinaire ces dernières années avec de plus en plus de défis et moins en moins de, de renforcement. On a besoin d'investir pour former, pour amener et accréditer plus de travailleurs de l'international et on a besoin d'assurer euh, un plus grand appui pour ceux qui sont dans le système maintenant. On doit investir dans la santé mentale parce qu'on sait que l'accès à des services et des soins de santé mentale, particulièrement pour les jeunes, sont essentiels dans notre réussite en tant que société. Et ensuite, la collecte des données et la numérisation de notre système médical va aider non seulement les gens à avoir une meilleure qualité de service parce que les spécialistes, les pharmaciens, les autres vont pouvoir connaître exactement ce dont ils ont besoin, mais aussi, ça va nous permettre de voir de façon ouverte et transparente les résultats qui sont en train d'être livrés par les investissements qu'on amène, y compris les investissements d'aujourd'hui de 3,1 milliards de dollars sur les prochains trois ans. Okay, Prime Minister, don't go anywhere. Yeah. Next question well, for actually, you. Can we just get the Minister a question? 
Thank you. Yeah, I think the question was very specifically related to um, patients who are waiting to uh, get that hospital bed after they have appeared at an emergency department and had that treatment. So I'm going to talk very briefly. Um, during the pandemic, in the last five years, our Ontario hospital partners have added an additional 3,000 beds in the province of Ontario. We have in the works right now an additional 3,500 that are being built. So the expansion is happening. Uh, through legislation last year, we were able to work with our long-term care partners to make sure that individuals who were in a bed in a hospital that more appropriately could be dealt with in a long-term care bed where they would get the services they need. We have that legislation and that has allowed us to move those individuals who more appropriately could be cared for in a long-term care bed. There's lots of work going on and I have to give a shout out to all of the partners who make this work, whether it is our physicians, our hospitals, and of course our long-term care homes. This, these are partnerships that make sure people are getting the service where they need when they need it in the appropriate setting. Thank you. Prime Minister, um, I have a question for you um, on behalf of my colleagues in the Parliament Hill Bureau, and if you could answer in French and English, please. And I'm Megan Fitzpatrick from CBC. Um, this is on the Supreme Court ruling this morning. Um, they upheld the constitutionality of C-92 that allows Indigenous peoples to have jurisdiction over child welfare. How significant is this decision for the future of reconciliation and to the kind of things that could happen in the future? It is a deeply significant positive decision from the Supreme Court that says that Indigenous communities should have control over their kids who are at risk in terms of supporting them, in terms of making sure they have culturally appropriate in-language supports. For far too long across the country, uh, kids in situations at risk have been removed from their communities, put in foster homes, sometimes far away, certainly not grounded in Indigenous long language and traditions, and that has perhaps gotten them out of harm's way in the immediate, but has left them with scarring of loss of identity, loss of language, uh, and uh, a disconnection from uh, their cultures that has had devastating impacts, as we've seen in so many situations across the country. So, the Supreme Court affirming uh, that with C-92, which is legislation that we co-wrote with Indigenous peoples as a hugely important part of moving forward on reconciliation to make sure that kids stay in their communities and, and are get, given the supports and safety they need is really important. And this means now we can continue to work with all provinces and territories as we move forward on making sure Indigenous communities, First Nations, Métis and Inuit get to take care of their own kids and give them the brightest possible future. C'est une très bonne chose. Uh, la décision aujourd'hui de la Cour suprême est extrêmement importante pour la réconciliation parce que uh, elle permettra aux communautés autochtones à travers le pays d'avoir uh, le, les soins uh, pour leurs, leurs enfants à risque. Pendant trop longtemps, des enfants à risque ont été enlevés de leur communauté, envoyés loin de leur langue, loin de leur culture, et ça a eu des échos et des impacts uh, sur des décennies de perte d'identité et de culture. Donc, avec uh, C-92, on a su créer des partenariats pour livrer les soins et les services et les appuis aux jeunes dans la communauté. On va continuer de faire ce travail parce que c'est un élément essentiel uh, de réconciliation conciliation, mais on accueille avec euh, grand, 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 grande joie la décision euh, d'aujourd'hui de réaffirmer euh, notre plan pour la réconciliation. Just as a follow-up, in terms of the healthcare worker shortage in Ontario, you're saying one of the things you're doing is federal funding will be used to help Ontario bring healthcare workers in from other provinces and be licensed here faster, but can someone explain how federal money is going to help do that? Like what actually needs to happen in order to make it easier for healthcare workers to move here and start working right away? And Minister Jones, you've been talking about that for a while. I remember you talking about this last year. Is that not happening yet? What are the barriers to making that happen quickly? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll turn over to my provincial counterparts uh, in a moment, but we recognize that national licensure, the ability of uh, trained professionals here in Canada uh, to move for work, for family reasons, for various reasons, to practice in other jurisdictions is an important part of making sure our country is able to respond to varying needs across the country. Uh, it's a discussion amongst the provinces. Uh, it's a discussion that comes to recognizing credentials and qualifications 
implication that also has implications around making sure we're doing a better faster job of recognizing credentials of people who are trained overseas to be able to get them up to Canadian levels quickly so they can continue to contribute to, uh, to health uh, here in our country. These are things that are very important. A lot of it is on the provinces, but the federal government is there to be a partner to look at the tools that we have around either immigration system or Department of Labor uh, and work with them to get people accredited quicker to allow for a stronger system overall. Thank you. So one of the things that we were able to do in August of 2022 was uh, send a minister's directive to both the College of Nurses of Ontario and the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario. And it said, you must assess, review, and ultimately when appropriate license people who have been waiting in the queue to get those assessments done. That those two ministerial directives have led us to the highest number of internationally trained and educated nurses getting a, a license in Ontario uh, in the last two years. The other piece that we are working on with the College of Physicians of uh, Ontario in particular is removing a practice ready assessment piece that would ensure when you come from Ireland, uh, US, UK and uh, Australia, you remove the practice ready assessment. What does that mean? It means that they have one piece that we have enough data to show their training, their education is equivalent to Canada and Ontario's. So we remove that red tape part uh, for those four um, uh, countries and we are working with the CPSO to see if there are other expansions of other countries that we can do the same. There is definitely more work we need to do to ensure that as internationally educated and trained clinicians move to Ontario, move to Canada, that we remove the barriers for uh, permanent residency so that they can start practicing quickly. Uh, the other piece legislatively that we have been able to do is an as of right program in the province of Ontario where any uh, physician who is practicing in Canada and any Canadian jurisdiction um, can move to, to Ontario and start practicing immediately. And I know at the uh, federal provincial territorial meeting that we participated in in the fall, there was a lot of interest from other Canadian uh, provinces and territories to see how they could implement the same piece in, uh, in their jurisdictions. So work is in, in progress, some has, has already happened, but I know that there are more opportunities to eliminate some of that red tape to make sure that people who want to live and work and raise their families in Canada, Ontario, can do that practicing as a clinician. Thank you. Catherine Goulotte, Radio-Canada. Les négociations piétinent entre le gouvernement et le NPD sur la question de l'assurance médicaments. Le NPD veut un régime entièrement public et universel. Qu'est-ce qui achoppe? Et est-ce que le Canada n'a pas les moyens de payer pour cette couverture universelle? Au contraire, euh, on travaille euh, très fort pour livrer un projet de loi pour encadrer les assurances médicaments euh, et on est en train de progresser de façon positive. Euh, comme on a démontré euh, dans nos avancées sur les soins dentaires, par exemple, euh, on a su démontrer euh, qu'on peut livrer des soins dentaires à 400 000 euh, enfants à travers le pays qui n'avaient pas accès l'année passée, euh, avant l'année passée, aux soins dentaires. Et maintenant, avec 600 000 de nos aînés qui sont euh, en train de s'enregistrer pour notre programme de soins dentaires. Euh, on voit à quel point on peut livrer des choses concrètement quand on travaille ensemble et on va continuer de travailler de façon constructive avec tous les parlementaires qui le veulent. Je veux souligner d'ailleurs encore une fois que le Parti conservateur du Canada a choisi de bloquer et de voter contre les soins dentaires, quelque chose qui est incompréhensible pour moi et pour bien des gens. Pourquoi ils voudraient couper les soins dentaires pour les gens les plus vulnérables, pour nos aînés, démontre encore une fois qu'ils ne sont là pour, que pour l'austérité et les coupures et pas pour aider les Canadiens dans les moments difficiles. Um, we have uh, continued to work constructively on uh, legislation to frame uh, pharmacare in this country, uh, and we're going to continue to do so. Uh, we are always there to work constructively with other parties on things that make a huge difference for Canadians. perfect example of that is dental care, where last year 400,000 young people who had not had access to dental care before uh, or given access through our program. And right now, 600,000 seniors have signed up just since the beginning of the year 
for uh, our uh, dental care program that is going to deliver significant supports to Canadians across the country. We're happy to work with all parliamentarians who want to deliver concretely the things that Canadians need. And unfortunately, the Conservative Party of Canada under Pierre Polyev chose to vote against dental care for seniors, dental care for vulnerable Canadians, uh, which is inexplicable because we are supposed to be there as governments to support people and make investments and make a difference in their lives. That's what we are going to continue to do alongside partners uh, like Premier Ford uh, who are delivering for Canadians.